of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jews first and then also the Greeks. It's my prayer that God the Lord would add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all the doers of his word. You might be seated. God has plans for us. And sometimes those plans takes us through to places just to test us. To try us, to fortify us, and prepare us to stand for God and witness for his glory and his glory alone. If you don't mind, allow me to disturb your conference right now by asking you to turn to three people and tell them this. The title of my message is, It's Only a Test. It's only a test. It's only a test. Yes, yes, it's only a test. Now my question to you today, when was the last time you failed the test? Amen. Amen. Have you ever been in a setting where the Lord gave you an opportunity to witness to someone about his goodness and you failed to do so? Deep inside, Satan was telling you this is the wrong place. This is the wrong time. Even whether it's in on our jobs or whether it's even in the grocery stores while we shop for groceries. I go as far as to say, fellas, hanging out with your buddies. Mm -hmm. Ladies, hanging out with your girlfriends. God has called us to a higher calling in him. This is the time and the season that we ought not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For he has, the word said, he has given us the power to stand on his word and to rightly, rightly divide the word of truth. Acts 1 and 8 simply expresses that. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and at the ends of the earth. The Greek word used here is power. It, it's in Greek, it's, 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 it's dunamis. And the English word here means explosive. Power being explosive, a forceful impact. Jesus wants us to be clothed with an explosive and forceful impact before we do anything to expand his kingdom. Jesus wants us to be personally empowered by the Holy Spirit before we try to reach others about his glory. We cannot witness without being empowered by the Holy Spirit. When we do things without the power of the Holy Spirit, guess what? We do them in vain. We do things in our own ability. We eventually end up placing our faith and expectations in our own abilities rather than placing them in the explosive power of the Holy Spirit. Each of us here today can and should be an inspirer. Each of us should be an encourager or a witness of others of Jesus Christ and his glory. To be a witness for Christ you have to have several important things in you, on you, and within you at all times to be a productive witness for Christ. That first one is salvation. The salvation of Christ simply means being born again. Amen? Amen. A new in Christ, having received forgiveness of sin. Amen? Amen. Reborn. Forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. If you are not born again in Christ, our Lord, you just cannot be a witness to the grace, the mercy, and the love that he has, has for all of his people. Your witnesses, guess what, of Christ is, is void of these things and his love. Next thing you need is the Holy Spirit. We talked about that earlier. The Holy Spirit must also be within you. 
Amen. It is that fire that burns with desires to tell all about the goodness of the Lord and our Savior and Jesus Christ and also his free gift of salvation. Along with being with that fire inside, it also, it is also that still small voice. You know, a lot of times we, when we do things and something speaks to us. And we say, oh, self is speaking to me. But that still small voice that you hear, allow it to guide you and give you the words to speak as a witness. That small voice is Christ speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Number three, know and understand his word. Mm -hmm. Know and understand his word. We have to know the word of God before we can witness to anybody. If we get an understanding of what his word is, then we can witness to others. It contains the truth in order to speak the truth of God. You must know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of God, his son and Jesus. You cannot witness to others without it, only with partial knowledge of truth. Amen. I look at I look at people come to church, they come in and get a little bit this Sunday, and you won't see them for two, three months. Come back again. You won't see them for two, three months. You're just getting partial part of the word. On, you need to come every Sunday, amen. amen, so that you can be equipped to go out and witness for the Lord. Amen. Our call of mission is to be fit to do the master's will. Amen. That's what the word says. Our assignment is to preach the gospel. Amen. That's right. Preach the gospel. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Even our testimonies can be witnessing tools to those which are lost. And, and rightly dividing the word of truth. And how do we do that? I'm glad you asked. 1 Timothy 2 and 15 says, To what study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you know the word of God, there's no shame in what you're doing because you know the word of God and you can line it up with what God's word says. Amen? Amen. Somebody tell me, how can we witness to others and we don't even know the word of God? Mm. We just out there shooting blanks. Mm -hmm. I have many times listened to speakers deliver the word of God, but I'm not just going to sit there and take their word for, for the truth. I've got to go into the Bible, the Holy Bible, myself, and research it, amen, that I would know that what is being preached to me is the truth. You have to read it for yourself and allow it to speak wisdom and truth to you. The fourth thing, you must be, you must put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6 and Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 12, it talks about that armor that we need to put on. It is your defense against evil and your strength in the word as you witness to the glory of God. It simply says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Now, that God is, that's an encouraging word right there from the top. Be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual weaknesses. Guess where they are? In high in places. High place. Hallelujah. We think they're right here among us, but they're in high places, controlling everything. Wherefore, yeah. take unto you the whole armor of God, <laughs> that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore having your lungs girt against the truth, about the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. And your feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. You can't you can go and share God's word with people being uh, mean and ugly. You've got to have peace in your heart in order to share the word of God for someone actually to receive what you have to offer to them. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Amen. You've got to have faith. 
wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. If you've got faith, you don't got to worry about the darts coming. Mm -hmm. The word of God says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But guess who's got your back? Hallelujah, Jesus has your back. Mm -hmm. And take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. The word of God. Praying always. Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And then it goes on to say, and for me, that other may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of God. Once you get all this on, it should give you the boldness. Come on now. You won't utter. You won't stutter. Mm -hmm. It will give you the boldness to speak what thus says the Lord. For which I am an ambassador in bond, that therefore I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Hallelujah. How many of you are speaking boldly about Christ Hallelujah. as you walk daily? Jesus. Hallelujah. As you walk daily. Hallelujah. The next thing is carrying the sword of Christ. We just got to talking about the Bible, which is also, which is, talks about having your lungs girded with the truth. <coughs> if you are armed with the truth and you know the truth, then speak the truth. It will be witness unto itself. Come on. Hallelujah. You don't have to go out. I, 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 I was talking to a pastor the other day. I said, There's too many people out there trying to fight God with the word. <laughs> yeah, but somebody, have you ever been challenged? Have you ever been challenged? Somebody come up to you about the word of God, oh, yeah. and, and you and, and, and it, it ain't your it ain't your business to challenge. Be challenged with the word of God. Come on now. If you have the whole armor on, guess what? God will speak through you. Come on. Some of those things we can just leave behind. Amen. 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 If you are armed with the truth and know the truth, then speak the truth, and it will be a witness unto itself. The Amen. word itself Amen. will be a witness for yes. you. Yeah. Carry the love of Christ and let it radiate through you when you witness to others. Mm. How many can truly say that when you walk up in a crowd, people see love? Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. There's no saying that, that applies here. That is, you can't, that you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. Everybody understand what that means? Amen. Love. Hallelujah. Love, to me, love is an action word. Amen. Amen. Not only do we speak it, we show it in how we treat each other. Hallelujah. That's what love is all about. Be a faithful witness. Stand firm in God's word and believe in what the Lord has told you, not what man has told you. Amen. Sometimes we get so caught up into what man done said to us and we miss out on our blessings. But God wants you to believe in his word and know that his word is true. Be a personal witness. Amen. Everybody that has given their lives to Christ has should have a testimony. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Personal witness. Mm -hmm. Carry your own personal testimonies to others for what God has done in your life. And you'd be surprised how it will affect other lives. Amen. Somebody might have been going down that same road that you just got off of. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you let them know that there is a God that can and that will yeah. save you. Amen. Amen. Be an ambassador for God. Yes. Brother Arahid, an ambassador. Hallelujah. An ambassador for God. Just like you protect your loved ones and defend them, so you must do in and for the Lord your God. You do this thus, ambassadorship. You, you do this through ambassadorship and faithfulness in God's word. Amen? Amen. We're just about to. Hallelujah. Actions. Action speaks louder than words. How many of you believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. If you walk in the footsteps of Jesus, you should know that sometimes how you act. I'm going to step on some toes now. <laughs> how you act, how you react, or 
behave in any given situation. Oh. Mm. Shows and reflects on the Lord. Now you out there saying I'm a Christian. Mm. But look at how you act. Come on now. Mm. How can you convince somebody that you are a Christian? How can you even convince anybody to come and be on this side when you're acting a fool and looking all ugly and carrying on no love? <laughs> right. <laughs> People are watching us daily. Yeah. Yeah. People are watching yeah. us daily. They are. Those, who, those of us who have confessed a, a, a life in Christ, mm -hmm. God, they, they're watching you. They're waiting for you to drip up. Yeah. Yeah. So that they can yeah. throw, throw it up against you. Amen. Yeah. But the devil is a lie. Amen. As my grandma Amen. said, the truth show ain't here. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know about you, but there have been times when I made all kinds of excuses for not being the witness that God has called me. Have anybody ever been there? Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I go so far as to speak in such things as, well, Lord, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then the Lord takes my mind and my heart back to the word. John 7 and 33, where he spoke, where Jesus spoke to the disciples, let him know that he who believes in me as the scriptures had said, not what I said, not what pastor said, not what your neighbor said, but as what as I have said, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Amen. God will never allow his work to die with the death or the failure of a man. So just open your mouth and he will speak through you, amen? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been a time you, you run up in a situation where somebody attacked you and you didn't know what to say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Spirit of God rests upon you. Rest upon, yeah. We have to allow the Spirit of God to rest in us, yeah. not just yeah. upon us, but in us, so that when we do the things that we do out in public, people will know that we are Christians amen. by our love. Amen. We are given so many chances to witness up to others daily. And guess what? We fail the tests over and over and over again. I don't know about you, but I do. I do. Hallelujah. When I, when I rise every morning, this is my prayer. Lord, don't let the chance pass me by to witness to someone about your love, about your kindness, about your goodness, about your saving grace. We are confessed Christians. We as confessed Christians are judged daily by God on our confession of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now you know how I know that? <laughs> we look at 1 Peter 4 and 17. It says, for the time has come, the judgments must begin where? At the house of God. Yeah. Not outside. The judgment starts right here, right now. And it begins with us. What shall the end of them that obeys not the gospel of God? What's going to happen to us? And we're not obeying the gospel of God. And we're not using what we've been equipped in this place as we leave and go forth. This simply lets me know that God is judging us daily in all that we do and all that we say. And if we are not obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ, then God has prepared a place for us. And God forbid, well, we'll end up there. Amen. I'm not going to even say where it is. Because we know where it is. Amen? Amen. Amen. God performs only on the level that we expect him to perform in our lives. Amen? Amen. If he's the type of God that he knocks at the door. The word says he's knocked at the door. He's not going to break his way in. Come on now. No. He's going to only perform on the level that we allow him to perform in our lives. Amen? You stand. God. You stand. We have to have a desire to move to the next level in Christ. Kingdom Revelations Ministry, we have to have a desire to move to the next level in Christ. It is not enough for us to just hear the gospel, but we must believe it. Amen. We must 
believe it. We must live it daily. Not part time, not when we just want to live it, or not when we just want something from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I've been there, done Amen. that. Amen. Yeah. Call on just because I need him. And then when he bless me with what I got, guess what? I'm back out there doing the same old thing. Mm -hmm. God is not pleased. Rewind. Rewind. God is not pleased. Rewind. Rewind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, you know God is at hand. And we should be pressing toward the mark of a high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Second Peter 1 and 3 simply says, For God has given us all that we need pertaining to life, goodness, or godliness, it can be found right here in his word. Amen? Amen. Anything you need, it's right in the word of God. All we need to do is go and read it and apply it to our lives. Amen? Amen. As believers, we need to constantly depend on the Holy Spirit and his power that has been made available to us by the grace of God. Let us live like the Holy Spirit is really present in us and with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Let us live like the Holy Spirit is really present, really present in our lives. Amen. Okay? Witness with boldness, yeah. but depending on the Holy Power, the power of the Holy Spirit that brings God's glory. Yeah. That's what it's all about, bringing God glory. Amen. Yeah. So the next time you allow the devil to convince you that it's not, it's the wrong time, and it's the place, not the right place to speak up, just ask yourself the question. Am I going to fail this test today and miss out on my blessing? God forbid, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God that is given unto salvation to those that believe. I pray Amen. that you've been blessed by the word of God. Amen, yes. Praise yeah. God. God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Give him a hand, have a break. Yeah. It's only a test. It's only a test. Due to the fact we're having two services in one, we're going to hold the altar call. We're going to do the altar call after we acknowledge the memorial. We're going to go into the rest of the service. And we're going to have a dance prior to acknowledging the young king that's resting in peace right now. But before we do that, we're going to bring our head back up. We can finish this part of the service. But I want you to, at this time, I want you to remember the message. Maurice didn't know Mungi. He didn't know Mungi. He didn't know him. He wasn't there Thursday, Friday, or yesterday. He had no idea. But you, did, did you hear the word? Yes. Did you yes. hear the word? Yes. 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 God is speaking. What does say the Lord? Amen. He loves you so much. He done, done so much for you. He done took you out of so much stuff. It's time for you now Amen. to be ready, available, and willing to do something for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. It's time. Hallelujah. Time. 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 The devil is always ready to tempt. But God is the one that does the test. Amen. Are you passing the test? It's only a test. <laughs> yeah. Are you passing the test? Glory to God. Glory to God. Go ahead. Tight in offering, I want you under, uh, you to understand something. Tight is something. 
tithes and offerings in the storehouse, and I will supply you with everything you desire. Read it yourself. You can read it in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, starting. Bring your tithes in the storehouse. If you need a tithe envelope and you're tithing today, please raise your hand and the ashes will be great to who I hand it over to you. Do we have any tithers in the house today? No? Then we will go straight to the offering. It's the Lord's house and you never come empty handed to a king in front of a king. Even when you're with him, the Queen of England, you bring a gift. You obligate her to do something back to The Bible says, give and it shall come back to you. So it's an opportunity for all of you. Give and it shall come back to you. To, to hold the envelope and give it to the Father or Nancy if you don't know who the Father is. This is the offering for the church, so I don't want you to get that mixed up. Amen? Amen. If you're here, you still have a, a blessing for our young king. We want you to hold that envelope. Amen. And it shall come back to you. Sunday, um, I was really fixed up. You know, I don't know what to do. 
but this week is going to be like how it's going to move like I was really really tired uh, I needed my child to go for holidays I didn't make it but God has, knows why it, it didn't happen so um, we went for Bible study actually I wanted to go for Bible study that was Thursday I was like Lord look at me I need to go for this Bible study there was a woman of God that traveled I wanted to really listen to her word because it blessed me that Sunday mama so I called my pastor. You know, this woman is always there for me. She's like my mother. <laughs> In fact, on Wednesday, she called, called, she tried calling me the whole week. I have issues with phone. So, Sister Bella is about to do something about that. Anyway, so she, she called, I called her up. Then she's like, really? I call you from Monday to Wednesday, don't pick up. I said, Pastor, out of sight doesn't mean out of mind. She was like, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Anyway, she said, Pastor, listen, I need to come for Bible study, but I have no means to get there. Like, I, she didn't understand what I meant, you know. So she picked me up anyways. I went for Bible study, and um, the next day she told me there was a funeral, and I really wanted to go there because the guy that died, I know him personally. Like, the, my first time I got my driving license, I drove there, and uh, I turned 20 euros, and he was like, he thought I was from Kenya, so he started speaking, um, you know, so I it to me, you know, I was like, I don't understand it. So he's like, what, you're from Uganda? I'm like, yes, you don't speak, I'm like, no. So he said, I'll do that for you, as a gift. So I knew him, I always went there to town, and I hadn't seen from the whole year. So when Pastor showed me that picture, I'm like, listen, I know this man, I know him. This boy has been blessing me. All the time I turned, he gave me tips, all the time. Like, I've not seen him the whole year, since I traveled from Birmingham. So I was like, I didn't tell her. So pastor hands me something. Baby, you need this. So I was like, pastor is just no. She always, she's like a mother to me. She, she always gives. She always blesses me. So I was like, I didn't understand the blessing. I was like, what? Pastor, bless your heart. So anyway, I got means of traveling, and I, I thank God that I made it. You know, I call my kids handbags because you know. I'm always with them, and this, <laughs> this funeral, I was like, now I know this guy was really, I know he was really a good person, I knew there were going to be many people there, so I'm like, how am I going to move that, you know, I, like I said, handbag, again. So I called one of my friends, could you just help me for just one hour, so that I bring my child there, I, self, I, give, I give that one to, you know, like the sisters I have around, it's always a blessing. Anyways, I went there, thank God, I made it. I wasn't able to see his body, but I have him in mind, and may his soul rest in peace. Yeah. So, um, and that was one testimony, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, <laughs> it's, it's like a story every day, but I'll make it short. So, uh, it was yesterday. Yesterday, I went up the shop, Pastor's shop, and I was like, I was to do what I have to do, because I'm like, when Pastor says, I move if I'm available, I mean, phone-wise, but I'll take care of that. So I'm always there when she needs me. So I was like, I need to do something. I met some lady. You know, there are some people who just tell you and they make your day. I, I, I wasn't smiling the whole day. So she walked down and she told me, you're looking good. I'm like, okay, it's normal, thank you. She helped me, I'm like, I have something for you. She took me to her house and she gave me a bag of new clothes. I'm like, seriously? Like, I, <laughs> why? Like, you, when I see you, I see happiness. So, I thank God for that, and thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. My testimony gets you, get us fasting. Ich habe ähm, gefastet, weil ich, ich war in meinem Leben ziemlich unzufrieden und auch mit meiner Jobsituation und war frustriert mit den Leuten von der Kirche. Und, ja. und ich habe gefastet und in dieser Woche haben sich so schöne Sachen ergeben ähm, auf der Arbeit und ich habe jetzt meinen Test zurückbekommen, den wo ich in dieser Woche geschrieben habe. Und die Note ist sehr gut und also dafür danke ich Gott. Ohne das Fasten wäre es wahrscheinlich nicht so gut ähm, ausgegangen. Mhm. <lacht> 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 Praise the Lord. 
Praise God. It's wonderful to be back at Kingdom Re Revelation Ministries. Amen. My schedule doesn't always allow, but when I can, I'm always grateful to be here and I'm always blessed. Those of you who can, please tune in to AFN Radio 102.3. Uh, on September 8th at 8.30 a.m., I'm going to be doing a live interview on the radio. Hey. Um, <laughs> it's one of those situations where, you know, the devil can get you sucked into comparing yourself with other people. And I had reached a point where I was dis discouraged and disappointed. I said, Lord, I should be a lot further in my career than what I am. And I compared myself with my friends in the States, friends that I went to school with that have bigger apartments, bigger houses, bigger cars, nicer things. And I said, Lord, I have the same amount of schooling as them, but look at what they have and look at what I have. I'm so ready, I'm so done, I'm ready to go back to the States, Lord, open up a door. And then I said, where I am right now, make the most of it and take a moment to appreciate what you have and God will give you more. Amen. And then a couple weeks later I found out that I'd won an award um, mm. to launch a project at work and then AFN got wind of it somehow and nobody knows how the radio station found out about it. <laughs> and the reporter called me and I don't know how he got my number but he says can you come to the station? I said when you name the time and you name the date and I'll be there. Um, so, you know, I, I just thank God for that, and I thank God for his blessings, and I thank God for his faithfulness. If we just take a moment to appreciate where we are and know that good things are coming, as long as we do what he has ordered us to do and we submit to his will and to his way, you know, and I didn't know that somebody had um, died. Um, I just recently talked to my brother, and who's also just the best friend anyone could ever have. And he lost his best friend at 42 years old to obesity. It was a senseless death for a 42 year old to die, but we just all thought he was a big guy. He was a big, lovable guy. We never thought anything of his weight. He just collapsed and died. And he couldn't make sense of it, even though he's a really devout Christian. And I said, Lord, give me the words. And I told him at a time like this, when you there's so much loss and so many people dying and you can't make sense of it, if you try to make if you try to shoulder that burden on your own, you'll collapse from the weight. You have to take that weight off your shoulder and let God carry it for you. Amen. And that was the only words I could give him, and that was enough. Amen. That was enough. Amen. So I hope that helps anyone out there who's grieving right now. Amen. And that's it. Fire, <laughs> fire. I think we're just going to go on into why we... The other reason we're here, amen? amen. And for those who have um, uh, something to say, they can uh, say it during that time. Um, first of all, I just thank God um, for all of us being here. Thank God that we took you took the time out to support um, a star, <laughs> to support um, our young brother, young king. I I say kings, people. I I had this monkey picture at my shop and uh, one of the other Africans from Ghana say, is he a king? From Kenya? I said, evidently you don't know me because I believe what the word said. God said we are all kings and queens, prince yeah. and princess. Amen? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how I believe, you know, some people don't, you don't know that they are so that's on them. I found out who I was, and I found out how to acknowledge God's people, who He said they are. Amen? Amen. But before we go into that, let us recognize our visitors. If you're here for the first time, um, we at King of Revelation believe acknowledging acknowledge God's people. So we want you to know what time it is. King of time. We are church. On who? For who? For Christ. We are going. God people, we go where the people are, and we thank God that you decided to come here and to visit Kingdom Revelation or to support our young king who's resting in peace 
while his father, last day here in Germany, prepared to go back. So if it's your first time, would you please stand and tell us your name, how you got here, hallelujah, Jesus, and where you from? Um, I'm, I'm tired of here, you know, I'm from, I'm from Halbron. I'm from Halbron. And this is my first time here, but I know Maurice for a while, and I, and I know Minister for a while, but I'm happy to be here, and I pray to see a whole lot more on a regular basis. Where you from? In, in Chicago. I'm from Chicago in the States. American Yeah, I'm from Chicago in the States, yeah. Praise <laughs> God. First time, would you please stand and tell us something about yourself? Praise him. Hallelujah. I'm from Ghana. I came here for a full time. And now I'm making this two guys out here. And my friend. Praise God. Is this the star that we have here uh, that's traveling around? No, no, it's the Holy Colleague. Oh, you're working hard. It's very important. Okay, you're from Ghana. Give Ghana a hand to Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Sally. I had an invitation from Pastor Linda the last, I think, two or two weeks or Pastor Linda the witnessing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm grateful to meet you people. It's my first time, and I am very sure I'll be coming the next day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where are you from? I'm Kenyan. I'm from Kenya. Kenya in the house. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah, no problem. I put it come out. <laughs> Afternoon, everyone. Good Afternoon. I think I've met nearly everybody. I've been far from the field. Uh, my name is Kerago. But so many people call me Crash. 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 Crash the Crasher. The Crash the Crasher. That's what uh, I came here because of, uh, I can say maybe my son.